and welcome to Good Food Live. I'm Jenny Barnett. And I'm Ed Bain. Sample a taste of Christmas Iranian style as Chef Ariana Bundy serves up pomegranate and walnut stew. And I'm going to uh, leave you. We'll come to you in a moment. Now, our next guest's multinational training has held her in good stead as she's catered for stars such as Madonna, Nicole Kidman and Tom Hanks. However, she's here today making a festive dish from her homeland of Iran and it's a pleasure to welcome new chef to the show, Ariana Bundy. I was calling you Bundy. But <laughs> it, uh, Bundy, that's not an Iranian name, is it? It's my father's name who's from America. Okay. Yeah, so so now let, our people will all want to look at you at home. So you're not allowed <laughs> to come over here. You're not okay. allowed to start cooking yet. They're all going to want to look at you and stare at you at this Iranian prince Mm. When did you leave Iran? Uh, when I was very young, about five. You moved to the States? Moved to the States, moved back to Europe, and then just recently been back to Iran, about maybe five, six years ago. But you won awards for your pastry chefery. Um, I love pastry. It's what, what I love to make. It de but don't most chefs have to start at pastry and then move on? Not particularly. It depends. You usually do both in, in school, and then you either go into cuisine or pastry. So it depends. Really? And you just you love sweet things, I love sweet which is things. why you love Nicole Kidman and Madonna, because they're very sweet, aren't they? But you didn't do one-on-one -on -one cooking for them, did you? No, no, we, we basically did all the events for the Oscars and big parties and, and uh, movie premieres and things like that. And do they come up and say, oh, Ariana, that's so gorgeous? Do they say that? Yeah, yeah, well, if they like it, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I hope I can say that at the end, because uh -huh. I'm kind of starry so. like Madonna. Okay, now this, yeah. we've got the Christmas season in Iran. Mm -hmm. There's Jews, Muslims, Christians, the whole exactly. bunch of Zoroastrians. I love that, isn't it? Yep. They, who would eat this? Well, everybody. Everybody has this Neropetar. The Jewish, the Christians, the Zoroastrians, But they just Muslim. do their version of it? No, everybody has the same. I mean, if you're Jewish, you do it uh, a kosher way. Um, otherwise... Um, it's basically the same. Everybody Fantastic. eats the same food. What's it called? It's called Fesenjan. It's an old, old recipe from, you know, dating back maybe 400 years. And it hasn't been changed. It's been, you know, constantly the same. You may change a bit here and there, but it's, it's basically Show the same. Show us how we do it then. Yep. Uh, I've got some uh, ground walnuts here, which I've been stirring over medium heat for about five to seven minutes. We don't want to get it too dark. We want to have it sort of like a caramel color. And... I'm going to add some chicken stock to that. We were saying that when we were practicing that if you don't want to use chicken, chicken stock, stock yeah. you use vegetables. vegetables. But if you wanted to make a vegetarian version, you'd do everything without the chicken breast. Yep, you do it. And it's quicker as well. And um, much, much quicker than when you have meat in it. What's Golden this? plums, dried golden plums. Optional if you can't find them. If you have access to a Middle Eastern store, you can use it. But uh, what, uh, alternative to golden plums? Uh, more paste. It just adds a bit more tang. More paste or a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Yeah, adds a bit more bite. So what you're going to do is lower the heat on that and let that cook for about 15 minutes. We want to get the walnuts a little bit more tender. Right. And what I'm going to do here is take some chicken fillets, lovely pieces of chicken fillets, and I'm going to go ahead and sear that. Sear your fillets with some onions. Traditionally, they make it with duck. That's what it is in the, in the Caspian region of Iran. Used to make it with duck, but it's lovely with turkey as well and fish. And so, t tell me, the, tell me the name of the dish again. Fesenjan. Fesenjan. What does it mean? I don't really know. Uh, basically, what it is is pomegranates and walnuts. But uh, I don't know their name. And the symbol, the symbol, I mean, does the walnut have a symbol for you or the pomegranate? Mm, oh, well, the pomegranate has a universal symbol for everyone. Uh, but the, the walnut is actually indigenous to Iran. It, it was called the Persian walnut, but it's called the English walnut now because of the English merchants. Because we have probably rage everything, darling. Exactly. I know. And, um, and when it was given to the Greeks back in the days, it was called the Persian tree. And... We use a lot of walnuts in our foods. And um, what is pomegranate? I mean, pomegranate is what? A symbol of what? Sweetness and life? Sweetness, and life, rosy cheeks, as King Solomon said. You have rosy cheeks and, like, pomegranates and fertility, I guess. Hold on. Look at me. I'll only do the rosy cheeks. I'm not doing the fertility. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Lovely. Good. All right, so we've got our walnuts softening up and we've got our chicken yep. searing. We've got, you don't want to sear it too much because it's going to still continue cooking and you want to keep it nice and tender. Okay. So when you get it a bit golden, you're going to add it to your walnuts. 
And again, you can make this on its own and just add it to your roast turkey. It's fantastic. Okay. Yes, we're all dying to taste this because it's a, there's so many walnuts in there. None of us can imagine what it's going to taste like. Mm, yeah. Okay. And what you're going to do here is put it at the lowest setting and place the lid over it. Is that, does that go in? Yep, it does go in, actually. So that was with the onions and the chicken. Turmeric and white pepper. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to take away that chicken smell with the turmeric. That's what Iranians do. It's like take away the meat smell with the turmeric. Oh. So you're going to add that when you're cooking your, your chicken. Okay, let's move this away. Okay. Lovely. And I don't know whether I should use this lid, but I'm going to go ahead and cover my pot and let that cook for another 15 minutes. Great. Okay. Over here we have... We've got fantastic pomegranate juice and from a Persian market. Wait, look at me. <laughs> pomegranate from a Persian market. Sounds like a song. From a Persian market. Okay, if you can't get pomegranate juice from a Persian market. If you can't, just add more paste. Just double the recipe for the paste. What's the paste? Pomegranate, pomegranate paste. Pomegranate paste or molasses. So if you can't get pomegranate paste, you use molasses. If you can't get pomegranate, it's the same. Paste and molasses are the same. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just right, wording then. it differently. All right, then. Um, and what you need to achieve is a sweet and sour flavor. So as long as you have... You know, if you don't have a great, uh, the pomegranate juice, you add more paste and, you know, add more sugar to it or more lemon. You just need to balance that All right. out. So we've got some brown sugar if we need to add more sweetness. We've got a chicken cube because what I've done is lowered its fat content. I didn't put any oil because of the walnuts. And so I'm going to add more flavor and I've reduced the cooking time from about two and a half hours to an hour. So a little bit unconventional, but it just makes it a little bit more easier. And some... Uh, aromatics has so cinnamon. Cinnamon, lovely. Cinnamon. So let's put okay. the, uh, I, oh, I, oh, All that just goes into the... Just goes in there. After 20 minutes of 15, 20 minutes of cooking over here. So in goes our juice, our paste, our cinnamon, our stock cube and our... But, but you were waiting for the lemon and the sugar at the end to see how you want to balance exactly, it. Exactly, okay. yeah. So let's move this out of the way because we've got one that we have prepared earlier. So I'm going to add about four tablespoons of this lovely pomegranate paste or molasses. Make sure it's Iranian make because uh, the other Middle Eastern ones don't taste the same. Fortunately, it's true, but... I'm not arguing. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't got any on my shelf. <laughs> lovely. And you stir it around. You cook stir that for around. about how long? Uh, you cook it for about 20 minutes, again with the lid on. Lovely. And there's a little trick Apparently, I'm sure it's true, but it's an uh, old Caspian lady told me this. You stick a wooden spoon in the pot like this, and it conducts the heat so that it doesn't stick at the bottom. I don't know if it's true, but we're going to give it a go and, and see if it's right. Lovely. Well, you did it with the other one. Did you leave your spoon in? We didn't. Let's, oh, you didn't. So we'll never know. We'll never know, unless you let's try it at home. Let's now, also here I've got this. What is this? This is, if you really have access to Persian or Middle Eastern market, this is... Um, a lavoshak, it's called a fruit roll, pomegranate fruit roll, and you can add bits and add pieces that. of that Just to add more flavor. Lovely. This is to cheat because you're lowering the fat content. Let's serve up, my darling. Okay. Onto the plate. We've got a little pyramid of rice. It, do, it looks a bit unusual. The color looks unusual, but I guarantee you, once you try this, you're going to absolutely fall in love with it. And I think it goes really well with Mary's venison. It, okay, so now once you've cooked it all down, how long in all does it take to cook? Ish. In an, an hour. An hour. Yeah. We're thinking because you said instead of it being two hours, it's now an hour. It's an and hour, then we an sprinkle hour. our jewels of pomegranate, mm. don't we? Yes. Where? Right on top. And I've made a little rice m mountain there with a little crispy rice tadik. It's you cold. could call it a cold mountain, couldn't you? Since cold you cooked mountain. for Nicole Kidman, and that's her latest <laughs> well. Here's how Ariana made this fantastic dish. Yep. To make walnut and pomegranate stew with chicken, place the walnuts in a heavy saucepan and stir constantly over a medium heat until light and golden. Slightly lower the heat, add the chicken stock and plums and cook for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, lightly sear the chicken with the onion, turmeric and pepper. Add this to the walnut mixture and cook for a further 10 to 15 minutes on the low setting with the lid on. Finally, add the pomegranate juice, molasses, sugar, cinnamon, and chicken cubes, and cook for 20 more minutes. Serve with rice. Okay, Mr. Brett, Ooh. Mr. Baines, go on, tuck in. That's why it looks wonderful. Very interesting. Ooh.
Take some rice yeah. with it as well. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Mm. It's a warm-up. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I think we're around. Mm. Mm. Sweet and sour, tangy, mm. crunchy. Sweet and sour. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Very good mm. texture. Mm. Mm. Texture. Join us after the break for mm. more Yule <laughs> treats. For to think up the words with Amy Wilcock. Go on. And we'll be completing our romantic Christmas dinner for two as I serve up a stunning cappuccino mousse. See you in a moment.